Don't. What? You nervous? No, I'm fine. You're fine. You're, you, you do this all the time. Hey, everybody! Welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Suck Hour. Yeah, we're back. We still, we're still doing this. Unbelievably. My name is the Super Suck Lord. You already knew that. And we are here in the studio with a really, really special guest, Mr. Buff Monster! Ooh, hey! Yeah! Probably the most famous person I've ever had on the show. And we can deconstruct that later. And we have J Corp in the house. I've got some terrible news that Nasty Neil is not going to be here for a while. Uh oh. Yeah, there was a, a crane a crane fell on the Tappan Zee Bridge and his route to the city has been impaired from Rockland County, which is too bad because he had a, some kind of salad bring. He was gonna bring salad. You know, he Save was, my appetite for you, well, Neil. Well, he was complaining, I mean, we all were. You know, but he was, you know, we didn't know what to make because we got gluten-free people coming. You're, are you a vegetarian or? I try to eat as little meat things as possible. Do you eat cheese? Cheese is hard to give up, of course, but you know you gotta try to be a little bit uh, you know, okay, responsible. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna have to make some sort of um, concession to that because I was looking forward to Neil's salad, but we're not gonna get it. So fuck him. He's a sucker. He's a loser. Sorry, you didn't make it. Story of your life. Too bad. Show must go on. Fuck you. We got your picture, but we are gonna miss him. Uh, we got a great show today. I mean, obviously Buff Monster has got a lot to say, and I know a lot of you really want to hear what his opinions on things are. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna unpack this individual here. I would like to shout out everybody who's supporting us on Patreon. If you were one of the elite few that are subscribing to us, and you got to see last week's episode, which was private and scandalous, and we revealed a lot of incredible <laughs> details about psychedelic projects that you won't hear anywhere else. And so, if you want to be in the know, go to fucking Patreon.com/slash/TheSuckLord. No space. And sign up for as little as one dollar, you can become a member and get all the juicy, salacious details. Um, we don't really get donors to the show anymore since the Patreon started, so we don't have the list thing. But I would like to give a special thank you to Course for that thing that you did. That was very kind of you, and it is much appreciated. I didn't even know you were watching the show, but if you are, whenever you come to New York, I want you to hit me up or solicit me and we can uh, work something out. I would, I would love to do more business with you guys. Love ya, fucking toy biz. Cool, all right, so that's it. That's the masthead. Now, we're gonna get into the Buff Monster analysis. Yeah. Hello, Buff. Hi. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, you know? I, uh, it's only, what, episode number 24 or something? I wanted to get the shit up to speed before I started. Well, playing. I actually appreciate that. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, I you know as a general rule I don't do things on the first go around. Right, and I know. didn't want except some of the other things that you did. No, you did that chew the fat thing in the first episode. Ah, uh, maybe that's a rare thing. That's a rare thing. No, yeah. it's like no, Buff Monster likes to uh, the pump well primed before he comes in. Well, right? I'd like you to figure out all the details, get your voice, get your audience, blah blah blah, and then, then well, I none of that in. should happen. So now this is a desperate <laughs> attempt to poach your audience. Oh. you are going to promote this, oh. right? Yeah, potentially. Yeah, I will. If it doesn't go off the rails. If it doesn't go off the rails. I don't think it will. I mean, it's a fine line we have to walk here because I know everybody wants to see you eviscerated and raked over the coals <laughs> and brought small. That's so mean. They're jealous of you, <laughs> right? I don't know who they, you're talking about. They. they are jealous of you. I don't know. I mean, it's, it, you're, you're a strange creature to me because you're I successful am. and you don't really have a self-deprecating bone in your body as far as I can tell. Do you? Uh, I mean, I don't have a huge ego. I, don't have, you know, I just kind of just want to <laughs> just work. No, I think you work. like to toot your own horn a lot. No, Dana likes to toot my horn. Ah, so you have a surrogate <laughs> to toot it for you. But you like, we all like our horn tooted. Yeah. It just, we understand the awkwardness of tooting our own horn. <laughs> I've done it. I'm guilty of being a little too satisfied with myself. I, you know, I, I, don't even, I don't think about it that much. I just, I, I, I work, um, I post things on social media, and, you know, I just... Well, how did you get to be so incredible and successful? Um, is just, there? It's just hard work. Man. Okay, Let, let's 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 break it down. You know, it's like we're we're look at this shit. Can you believe this? Oh boy, this whole fucking thing. 
This is what, if you work really hard in the designer toy world and you make friends, this is what can happen to you. You know, yeah. I've never smoked weed. Do you don't want to smoke they, this right then? No, no. Well, I never you have. smoke? Yeah. Can you pass <laughs> that down to me? <laughs> Thank you. All right, all right, Buff Monster. Oh you're, f you're, you're, a famous, you're a famous artist. I c you're an artist, right? You call yourself an yes, artist? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'm you're, an artist. You're an artist, okay. Oh. And, and actually, that title uh, suffices, uh, suff is just fine for me. Is you know, that? Some people call me a street artist. That's fine. Uh, I guess I could be a toy designer. I Product guess I could designer. be an illustrator. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, surrealist. What is your whatever. art about right now? I know, I, the first time I ever heard of you, I was in L.A. in 2003. And I was doing a show in downtown L.A., this sort of clusterfuck of a group show okay and you had a piece in it i didn't oh, yeah? meet you there personally okay. it was for some charity yeah. thing was, and yeah. and there was a piece in there it was it was like a, str a bent up like no parking sign and oh, all this yeah. pink oh, paint yeah. on that's it with great. like bb shot oh, yeah, on yeah. it it was like buff monster okay what's that i don't know that's cool it's a nice looking piece i appreciate it i don't think i met you or saw you at the show first time i ever saw you in re irl was you had some toy release at the toy tokyo showroom in 2007. Yeah. I thought we first met when I took those photos. No, for you. well, we didn't meet. Oh. That's when the first time we met. You got to, where are you going? Oh, pass it to this guy. We didn't meet. I just, I used to go to all the Toy Tokyo, all the showroom parties. Okay. This was when Toy Tokyo had that little gallery yeah, yeah, on, the, yeah. on the corner upstairs where Toilers of Chinatown episode three takes place. Watch out. Yeah, watch out. <laughs> and I, and you had some toy and like, you know, I, this was 2007 and I was still trying to like come up. This was the toy release. The, the yeah, white one? Yeah, what did you put out? Yeah. Some sort of ice cream thing? Uh, or, no, 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 it was, it was before it was the ice Mindstyle. cream. Yeah, it was with Mindstyle. We did this white uh, eight inch figure. It was like that dome thing yeah, with uh -huh, the base yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I looked at that thing. I'm like, what the hell is this? And there was a line out the door yeah. and I'm like, who? And like, exactly. I went upstairs and I saw and you. And Lev felt the same way. Yeah, you had the <laughs> glasses and the, the mohawk that was down and you were just walking around like you own the place. And I'm like, who is this motherfucker? I hated you on site. <laughs> and um, you know, and I was jealous. I was jealous. And then uh, you know, and for for a minute, like when I was first coming up in the toy business, like I needed to hate people. Like I hated on Tristan Eaton for years. You know, we squashed that, and there was no real was reason for me to hate him personally. It's more just like, as a supervillain, I need an adversary. I need someone to right. be jealous of, or right. I need somebody to like make me feel like some sort of sense of injustice. You know, in order to motivate me to work, and you filled that role. And for a while, I was like, Buff Monster, fuck him. Really? I didn't know any of this. Yeah, it was this private inner world shit. Yeah, and it I wasn't guess. like I was obsessed with this. It was just like, I was, at the time when I was coming up, I used to look at people that I thought were like doing better than me and be like, fuck that guy. You know, and you served that purpose. <laughs> and like, it served my purpose to hate on you. But then I was out in um, LA doing my Monkey King show, yep. the suck up one, and I was doing a custom show, and I needed photos taken. That's true. And. You know, my our friend Dove, yep, who's coming good. on the show actually. Oh, yeah? When, yeah, for oh, nice. in, in, when New York Comic Con comes nice. around, he's good. Yeah, he just he made a quite a big fuss, and uh, <laughs> and like Dove is like, oh well, why don't you get Buff Monster to take pictures? He'll do it for, for for cheap, and he's a cool guy. So it's like, our Buff Monster, all right, fine. You know, you were gonna do it for four hundred bucks, so you came by and I'm you sure took, you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And you came by and you took pictures of like fifty figures, yeah. and you were like sighing throughout the whole thing as you do. Do you, you remember the first thing sign. you said to me? No, what? The first thing you said to me was, you got a pretty good racket going, don't you? Yeah, I was mm -hmm. right. And at the time, I think you were talking about the photos. But maybe you're talking about just me while yeah, like, what I do in general. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was really funny because as we were taking photos of your pieces, uh, or the custom pieces in the show, you had said, hey, man, you know, if you want to do one, you can do one. And then by the end of us working together, taking all these photos, you said, I don't want you to do one of these. I did? I don't yeah. remember that. Why did I say that? You, you, you uninvited me in the span of like two hours. <laughs> but I figured oh, you, you were going to say no anyway. You were going to say no. So it was a, a preemptive thing. Maybe. You were going to say no, right? <laughs> I have no idea. I, I don't, I don't, it sounds like something I would do. I don't specifically remember that. But it's like, all I do is, I, I know I wanted to hate you and I couldn't. You know, because you were nice and you were cool. And it's like usually when you start out hating somebody and they turn out to be cool, then you really like them. So, I, you know, I, be I came to really like you. I didn't stop being jealous of you. Oh. You know, I am still jealous oh. of you. Yeah, because you're successful and you make it look so goddamn easy. And you get to do all this amazing fun shit. You go to the, all these wonderful <laughs> places around the world. <laughs> yeah. And you don't, you don't seem to really publicly suffer from much self-doubt. 
Uh, well, that's true. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Yeah, and that makes me mad because I'm a complete mess. You know, I'm falling apart all the time and, like, well, completely tearing myself down. And I look at a guy like you who just, like, wears these stupid glasses and paints everything pink <laughs> and loves ice cream and just is having a fucking easy pass through life. You know, whereas me, a man of real substance <laughs> and meaning, is, like, fucking struggling. So, you well, know, I mean, that's... Dude, I mean, it's, it's funny, right? Like, uh, how people see it from the outside. But you and yeah. I have been friends long enough. I right, mean, and I'm being somewhat facetious, just so yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, it's just like I look at what you present to the world, you know, in your social media, and you're very successful on social media. Thanks to Dana, of course. Yeah, but I mean, and it's like you just you're just good and you're consistent and you don't like you're it's you're an artist, but you don't seem to have the, some of the traits of an artist that people classically uh, attribute to an artist, which is some sort of suffering and self-loathing. There isn't any suffering or self-loathing, uh, but there is some, I guess, I don't know. So there's definitely some frustration behind the scenes. Yeah, but so what causes your frustrations? I mean, you don't seem like a person that thinks he needs to grow or change or get better in any way. You no, seem no, completely it's like, set. No, it's exactly seem the opposite. Per- really? What are you talking about? I don't know. You no, seem I'm like totally... I'm doing different stuff. No, but stuff. I mean, not, not of your... Well, not with your work, but just like how you... <laughs> your personality and your quality as a human being. Like, I think it's maxed out, right? Like, this is the best person you're ever going to be. Ah... Uh... And it's more about just becoming more successful and accumulating more accolades and accomplishments and money and access and privilege and exposure and, and you know, glory, right? Yeah, I mean... Is that what it's the about? The way you say it is just, like, so simple. Like, That's oh, what it well, seems of course like you're going to do that. Because I want those things, too, but you seem to be taking a straight road while I'm taking this twisting, turning, you know, fucking back way up the mountain well but but that's the you're you're so self-aware that if you wanted to change that path you could do it at any time are you self-aware or is yeah. this okay are you well, you don't think so i don't know i mean yeah you must be but i mean no i mean it's just you've projected you projected yourself on the wall of the of the universe <laughs> you know and it's like it's just like whatever. It's like I mean, a lot. I can't tell where the image ends and the real human being starts. Well, it, it's a funny thing, right? Because I'm from Hawaii, yeah, right? which is like laid back and blah Does blah that blah. Play and in? I and I lived in LA, which is like laid back and all that. But you know, at heart, I, I'm I'm totally the opposite of that. Like in like us just hanging out, whatever. I can be kind of laid back and all that. But when it really comes to work. I'm totally the opposite. And that's why I moved to New York. I couldn't deal with this, like, laid back, yeah, we'll do it tomorrow kind of thing. It's like, I want to do it right this second. Right. You know? Like, it, like I felt like I was just banging my head against the wall living in L.A. It was, like, impossible. Didn't you also have, didn't you, didn't you wear out some welcomes over there? There's some rumors going on <laughs> about rumors? what happened to you in L.A. And, you know, you don't have to talk about it. But I heard, you know, you used to play the street art game pretty hard. Used to bomb a lot, right? Uh, there. Well, no. I mean, there's just. Didn't you make some enemies? Didn't you? Didn't someone want to kill you or something like that? There were some people um, not so enthusiastic and and uh, about what I was doing. Not fans. But um, but that but that that's a weird dynamic, and that's not you know. I, I don't really want to go into that all that much. Right. I mean, I guess it just if you're just like if you're this big, somebody's gonna feel like they got stepped <laughs> on at some point, right? I, you know, uh, there's you know when you're dealing with like street art stuff, there's there's definitely um, I don't know people people have opinions about how things should be or how things should look. Right or where things should be uh, and and all that. Um, so you're saying kinda, even if you don't personally affront somebody, just like your very existence could have will offend somebody. It can, yeah. The way you do your thing is yeah, wrong. Totally. You've experienced that, haven't you? On totally. the streets, just like not necessarily somebody be mad at you because you went over them, but no. just saying like that girl shouldn't be up at all because of. XYZ. Oh yeah, I think I think there's a lot of made up stuff that people have in their heads about other people, and they just sort of like imagine that they can sort of impose that opinion upon them by putting it on their art and I'm sorry you feel this way and it happens it's like when you walk in the street you can trip and fall so it still sucks but yeah that totally well, happens. I, I had a friend uh, well he became a friend but I had a friend uh, or, uh, there was an individual who was not such a fan he, and but you know he just saw that I just like kept doing what I was doing and that was it and blah 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 and finally he's like I gotta give it up to this dude and so yeah 
we worked on some things. And That's fine. I mean, you, know? you get hated on a lot, don't you? I don't think so. I mean, I've seen your <laughs> I've seen your Instagram when you go on an airplane. Okay. You know, when you can't moderate the comments <laughs> for a couple of hours. You know, people do occasionally throw shade. You know, I don't I don't post photos of me on on a plane. You know, I just No, I'm uh, just saying when you go on an airplane. Yeah. And that means you can't use your uh, phone for a couple of hours. Yeah. That means some of the hate on your Instagram can accumulate. It's pretty mild. <laughs> and you I don't mean, have a chance to erase <laughs> it. <laughs> it's pretty mild. Do you Instagram let hateful is comments not, ride or do you erase them? I erase them. Why? Um, because, you know, uh, Instagram as an, ex- as an extension of uh, my work mm-hmm. should be like a positive thing. And it's like, and... You know, I think Instagram and all social media is really like a personal thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, th- this idea that if someone follows you, you should follow them back. No, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that at all. I mean, you right? have a zillion followers. It's so like why your own you thing, f- right? Yeah. So I feel like it's the same way. It's like, look, if you're not a fan, don't follow, don't look, whatever. Don't say anything. Like, you know? Like, don't, don't, don't throw a rock. Well, yeah, I mean, what, what's the point? Do you right? block that person afterwards? I might. Mm-hmm. It just depends on it's like, because it's like, I don't, look, I want to be in the studio working. I don't want to be in the studio being like, oh my God, I got to look at Instagram all the time to see if someone's saying something. Yeah, because you shit. have someone does that for you. No, no, I, well, sometimes, but no, I just, I just, I just want to like focus on the stuff that But needs wouldn't to get you done. say that your social media success is also like heavily related to your commercial success? Uh, it's, in, it's like intrinsic, isn't you it? You think so? I've never considered that. Come on. No, I haven't. You go on there and you're like, I got a quarter million followers on Facebook. You it's know, a lot more than that. Thanks. Well, at the time, I remember, oh, okay. you know, you have oh, no okay. problem telling people of your social media successes, right? Only when it hits a milestone. Yeah, That's but why? All. Why do you feel the need to do that? Why is that important to tell people you have half a million followers? Uh, I, think, I think it's, you know, because as you know, there's people that look... Um, and see what's going on. Maybe they don't follow you. Maybe they don't stay on top of everything. Maybe they haven't been to your Facebook in a while. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I just think it's like I just one little thing. I'm not going to make a big deal of it. But you know, it's like I just want people to know, like that. You know, I'm are winning, growing. and and things I'm, are growing. That's things all. Are, things are growing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't always. I don't. I mean. I don't always necessarily feel like inclined to like call attention to that kind of shit. You know, I think it's corny, you know, to like toot your own horn, even though you don't think of that. But then again, on the other hand, I can't question, you know, like like you're ex- more successful than me in many areas. So I figured, like, should I crib shit from Buff Monster, even though it makes me feel like a total sellout? So, I, you know, I don't know. I ask those questions. You know, maybe I'm being a fucking stubborn dick on my high horse. And maybe well, you're I mean, the if one you, If you look at right. the context, if you look at the tone of the post, it's yeah, always just... you sound like a dick. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's always just like, oh, here's this thing I'm working on. It's yeah, never like, this is the best thing ever. But the thing you is, you don't, to have to, you don't have to put it in those terms just because of the smarmy self-confidence that you constantly ooze. <laughs> you know, it just people feel that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, can I, get, I need another beer. You need another drink? I'm um, good right this second. Uh, I got it. I got it. Oh, you want to get it? Anyway, I didn't. I didn't bring you here to just roast you or break your balls. You know. You sure? No, I mean not at all. I mean partially. Part of the reason I, I did was just because it's fun for me. But it's like I, it's not that I saved that just for you. Right. It's what I do. Yeah. You know what I do, and I'm just you know I'm just. I've, I've been I've been on a couch with you on a microphone. Yeah, and you before. handle your se- you handle yourself fine, but we don't have to just totally beat that till till it's over. I mean, let's just like, why don't we just talk about what you want to talk about and what you're about like what is what's up what's the thing what where where are you now well with things uh, you know it's it's uh, can't answer you know well i'll tell you what i did today mm. today i spent all day uh working on a new zine that i'm gonna do a zine huh? Uh, a zine it's an essay it's gonna be like an illustrated essay with writing yeah, yeah, Who's I've been, doing I've been the writing. Me, I've you. been working on oh, okay. this essay since the beginning of the year, actually, and I wrote it, and then I've rewritten it, and organized it. What's differently. the essay about? It's about um, it's about uh, my work. Um, 
like conceptually, like wh- why ice cream? Why okay, pain, I would like to hear that because things. you know, superficially. And I talk about social media. I okay, talk good. about that's good. Now, now I'm getting art excited. Art in the age of mechanical reproduction. I mean, there's a there's a whole lot. Okay, to good. It. I think that's a wise move. I think that's actually something you need to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not going to be honest with you. Like you, your work's pretty slick, and it's very uniform and it's very consistent. And without knowing you personally or just looking at it, it's, it seems like I wouldn't say superficial, but there's like there's not necessarily the sense of like a person there. It's just like you know, it's like you've created these characters and you make these really incredibly well executed reiteration of these characters. I mean, it's heavily branded and it's all sort of and it's sort of consistent and very concise. But there's you don't necessarily by looking at a melty misfit get a sense of who the buff monster as a person I think you is. do not really not but to hear but it does it doesn't have like it's it's not it's not specific the work itself is not immediately self-reflective as other work might be you know i think i think you can't tell what the hell's going on with with a melty misfit if you don't know the the person no you think so i mean i i, I think if you look at the formal qualities of the paintings you know they're really precise they're really clean they're really you know whatever i mean i think that's just kind of like yeah, but who i am and how i think about stuff no and, but it know. doesn't show me i mean yeah i can tell those things it's not an it emotional me, outpouring but it doesn't tell me like why are you doing it or what is your greater aspirations as a human being for doing this stuff that's not necessarily there you know, so to have you actually write this shit out, you know. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I usually don't go new, into kind it. Kind of a new thing. Yeah, no, you no, don't go into I it. I don't go into it. And, you know, art's all about context. Yeah. And so, you know. And you're uh, very careful at controlling your context. Well, uh. Which is, I'm not criticizing. Just because, listen. <laughs> Just because I make an observation is not always automatically a criticism. I, I'm, I'm okay. not saying it okay, is. Okay, good. I'm just saying that, well, it's just, you're, you're much more articulate in this situation than normally so me yeah what do you mean well we talk yeah we've known each other for a while Uh uh-huh you have opinions about things i have opinions about things yeah i know that but but yeah this is um yeah distinctly um i don't know specific yeah well i mean i don't want to just sit here and talk bullshit we're trying to create an hour of compelling material so yeah so tell so that's good i mean i'm 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 curious about those things because on on one hand you know, I do admire what you've achieved and the, the the level of development and precision and just like sort of realization you've you've brought to it. But then it's like I also feel like in a lot of ways you've seemed to have succeeded on so many levels. Like the the, the street art mural mm-hmm. game, you mm-hmm. seem to be as far as that world goes at the in the top of that field. You know, as far as the most opportunities and probably money you people make for as far as people who get paid to go to another country and paint a wall you're and get paid for it you're in the top of where that is right for the yeah 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 that's right. <laughs> no i'm not yeah yeah and like you know you your 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 merch game is tight you know yeah. you you sell shit you sell yeah. paintings you yeah. do art shows all the time you seem like you've already done everything uh, you know well like, i mean there's so much i want to do are you kidding me and and like, and, and well, going like, back to your point about consistency you know, it's it's so funny because you know, may I'm consistent to whatever extent that I'm consistent. But really, right. with this essay and really from the beginning of the year, I really want to be even way more consistent. Like I feel like looking over the last several years, um, not all that, n- not as consistent really? as, as I think I should. Well, be. let's. I think the creation of the Melty Misfits is sort of like a, a delineation point, right, in your work. Like you've always dealt with proto melty misfits you always dealt with the blobs and the drips yeah, and yeah. the ice creams and and those round shapes and things in the landscapes but then you know they were a little more abstract or you know a little bit yeah. more graphic and then you sort of brought them into a three-dimensional world with yeah. the melty misfits right. they're their characters right. their personalities you know it has a, m- a much more distinctive look and that's really what you've been trading on or building on or pretty much almost everything you do is sort of connected to that in some way and it's been you know that that seems very consistent to me you know compared to someone like the suck lord who just throws <laughs> spaghetti against but the wall I think you're super sticks. consistent too i guess maybe i don't know i mean i don't see how that gets more consistent or like is it really about just super doubling and tripling down on the melty misfits or is the no, melty actually, misfits the end of it or what is no i mean spe- more? since what the beginning of the year that? i've been doing these like more abstract like just melty paintings mm-hmm. you know and that was that was an interesting kind of thing you know um 
and I like those pieces, you know? And then just being, like, really specific and, and not strategic, but really just kind of, like, really aware of, like, these are the styles of paintings I want to be making, and, and this is how they're going to live in the world. And, um, you know, I'm working on a sculpture of Mr. Melty right now that we've been working on for a while, and I'm happy that guy's uh, getting together. Um, yeah, so... Well, what happens when you've made every single fucking Melty Misfit thing you could ever make? Is there something you're going to do past the Melty Misfits? or? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always after... Your, like, how far in the future do you see where your work is evolving into? Well, I mean, I want to do, like, all sorts of crazy stuff. Big stuff. I'm always after the bigger projects. Yeah, so you know, bigger we all are. But, I mean, is bigger... it always going to be in that... Uh, I mean, is it always going to be in the world of drippy ice cream characters? Well... Will you ever not do an ice cream thing? Um, Will you ever get tired of ice cream? No, I never get tired of ice cream, but that's what I'm saying. I, I, was do, I was doing these other pyramid pieces and these other more abstract pieces, you know, but ice cream, you know, it's not about ice cream, right? What I it, mean, no, what it, well, yeah, course. I guess, I mean, but what well, is it about? You know, that's the thing, right? And and that's why this essay came about. It's like the bright colors and the cute characters and all that. That's like an easy entry point for people. Yeah. But there's always, like, so much more going on beyond that. You know, there's what, always though? usually, like, a really much more darker kind of sure. serious thing going on behind uh -huh. it. And so for me, ice cream, um, the paintings are never were about ice cream. Ice cream is just a metaphor for life. You know, really, ice cream is a metaphor for the passing of time. You know, and that goes back to, like, the Renaissance and the Venitas paintings. You know, the paintings of skulls and smoke and bubbles. And, you know, there's a million symbols for... The futility of life, the certainty yeah, the of death, temporariness you know, of everything. all that sort of stuff, you know, and that, and so that's the thing. So, uh, you know, as it relates to everything else I do, you know, it's like, you know, it's the ideas and the, and the, and the paintings and those things that I like, but you know, it makes sense to do product stuff and it makes sense to paint walls because that's a way to just get those ideas out there further. You know, it's a way to, it's a different context, it's a different medium, but, um, but, you know, it's it should be out there for people to see and experience and all that. I mean, that's I, I feel like that's the responsibility of an artist is to get the work out there. And so when, you know, when we're talking about social media, it's like, you know, for me, it's like this idea of like if a tree falls in the forest, you know, if, if you make something and no one sees it. What's well, the fucking well, you, point of doing it? Well, it's not just what's the point, because, you know, it's like, well, it just doesn't exist. Like it has to be seen by someone, someone besides the person that made it. And so painting walls and, and using social media is just a way to just get more people to see it like that, that, that that's the responsibility of the person who's making it yeah but it. why though are you trying to help these people with this whole operation or is this just to help yourself no it's not a self-centered ego building exercise it's not no why then why do it that that's all you're after <laughs> Well, no, but I mean, it's just <laughs> everybody wants that to some extent. Are you really trying to help the world with all this shit? What's your what's the point? Well, I mean, Why do it just because you have to? No, not because I have to, but like so today on Instagram, I posted about this iHeartNY uh, wall that is gone. Yeah, I know. Boo hoo. Well, not just boo hoo. It's like you know the reason I painted that was that. You know, it's an iconic image, Milton Glaser, right, in the 70s, mm -hmm. I Heard NY. Yeah, of course. And it's weird that in New York, there's no place you can go. Like, there, it doesn't exist on a banner or a wall. Like, there's no way for you to have an interaction with that graphic besides just, like, buying it on a T-shirt in Chinatown. Really? So I it's didn't weird. even really think about that. So when I was given this little thing to paint, I said, well, you know what? How about I Heard NY? And, you know, it's like, it's like a, it's a... Not a gift, but it's a it's an addition to the neighborhood that people can enjoy, right? So tourists can walk by it and like they go like, uh, it's an eyeball. I get it. But you know, people in neighborhoods. So and so that's what's interesting about social media now is I can see in real time in black and white the impact that that stuff has with people. So yeah, it's gone. It's not. It doesn't hurt my ego at all. But well, it's no, more it like, actually well, fits your narrative that it's gone. Well, well, it melted away, right? I'd like it right? to be there. Well, yeah, it didn't melt away. I mean, it away. disappeared. But but I would like it to still be there, you know? Yeah, um, but it's not. It's not there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, as it was there, you know, there, there'd be, like, little things. People write little things on it and have to clean it up. And for me, it's just like, well, yeah, this is it. I'm the custodian of this thing. And we're just going to keep it clean for everyone to enjoy, you know? So I look at it as a selfless thing. Like, I wasn't even going to put my name on it. Because it's like, eh, it doesn't matter that I did it. Like, you enjoy it. 
giving something back. All right, I don't know. I didn't realize he was going to be this deep. I didn't. I really didn't. You know, you used to work for this guy. I did. You were, <laughs> that was you're, a fun time. Was, was it? it? It was a fun time. I, I actually ha have learned so much that I still use. Yeah? I still pack boxes in the same way. Oh, yeah? And that is very, very time like time efficient. We well, don't like, have outsourced the packing of boxes. Oh, that's fantastic. It's true. It's, it's done by people in Michigan. D did you have to show them exactly how to do it? No, too, no. Uh, they were professionals. Oh, great. And uh, that's why I went to them. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know what? That's fantastic. No, I don't mean that in any other way then I was just like you know there, you, I could train someone to do certain things mm -hmm. or I could just go to people that do it all day long right and I was like well these people do it all day long they already trained yeah I really well you've trained me I, I stole <laughs> that from you so good <laughs> I mean I do admire the, the efficiency of the way you do your do your shit it's oh I, I'm always efficient. after the most efficient way possible always uh, yeah yeah Always. And that really goes back to the whole ice cream thing, right? Like a metaphor for life about things, you know, about our limited time here and the certainty of death and all that sort of stuff. And so as part of that, mm -hmm. no, uh, you're, let's you're, be as efficient as possible so we can right. get as much I mean, done as it's possible. About, it's about, like, living longer in a way. It's like if time is a mutable, stretchable thing, it's like how much time you spend every day doing X, Y, Z. Like, you're projecting yourself in the future if you, like, if you were able to limit, like eliminate like two or three hours of drudgery out of your day, you know, then you're projecting yourself in the future. Yeah. And you're really good at that. I'm one of those type of self-righteous people that'd be like, I have to do it this way. You know, I have to do the, the, do the work, the hard work. There's this weird, I feel like a, certain artists, that's, that's one of the reasons why you're so weird and different. And that's why I partially want to hate you, but it's also because it, forces me to confront my own limitations but it's just so different it's like there's always this self this brow beating vibe that goes along with certain type of artists where they have to do it the hard way or if they're not struggling or if they're not suffering or if they're not like sort of like killing themselves to get it done then somehow it's not real and that's all total fucking bullshit but a lot of people succumb to that myself included you know just my my reluctance to just like get you know just make it easier for myself just because it's better for everybody that likes the work you know to not for me not to do that and it's like you don't you just you read you read all those fucking business books i read so many books it's amazing you know when i lived in la i never read because i was either working or driving but now that i have to take the subway to work it's awesome i have like half an hour each way that I can read, and so I read so many books, business books, art books, uh, it's crazy, I mean. Well, so what, I mean, what's your, what do you, what, is, what do you think, what's the highest thing you're trying to accomplish? Like, if you were just gonna say, like, what's, of, of your current goals that you've envisioned for yourself, what's the, the ultimate one? Yeah, I mean, I, th I mean, I think the ultimate would be, you know, probably a along the same line, I mean, I don't know. The, a movie? No. Nah. An amusement park? Amusement park is definitely Ooh. up there. You know, amusement park to create a, a, a fully immersive environment with all the um, special merchandise to go along with it. Of course. It. Like well, Disney, do you want to just be Disney? Well, actually, I just finished another project for Disney. Yeah, I know that. You've <laughs> fucked with Disney before. And you're very, we'll talk about that because right. you're also very good at getting those, uh, you know, those official gigs. Yeah. You know, but I like those official gigs. Yeah, no, you're great. And those are mostly I, what I, I do. I never get those ever, and that's probably why I'm poor. But <laughs> I'm just more like, I'm not saying like working for Disney, but do you want to be another Disney or just have something like that? Do you want to have like a cartoon or a movie or a show? Well, a cartoon, or? yeah. I mean, a cartoon, definitely. You know, but, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of in this place where I really have to think about the time and where the time should be invested. You know, I have lots of ideas, right? Yeah, we yeah, all do. Cartoon and I great, have to blah, let blah, blah, so blah. many of my ideas fall No, aside, but you really you have know? to think about it. Like, as, a, as it comes to animation, right? Like, there's only a certain amount of work that I can take on that I'm not in control of. Um, you know, so if I make a painting in the studio, I, I don't have to talk to anybody about that. Right. I can just do that. But when it comes to, like, something like a cartoon... Yeah, you're on a, you have a fucking whole committee. Yeah, it's a committee. And it's not even, like, if it's good or not. Like, let's say everyone agrees that it's good everything's cool blah 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 but all of a sudden there's some change on the executive level and now this doesn't fit into their, their and it's scheduling over. you know so it's like there's only so much of that stuff i can really kind of invest my time into but i mean it's far, well but so so how do you decide it's like because you you could you could be that if you just keep pursuing that you can yeah. have that 
or you could be a guy that has museum you know paintings hanging in museums and stuff like that i have one painting in a museum yeah but i mean like you know like like on some permanent right. shit yeah, you yeah. know like some real ass shit you know I, i'm not saying that that's not permanent but i mean i'm just saying like you could no it is permanent no it's amazing that that's the only permanence i've ever achieved but i'm saying you could continue to go in that direction and develop that yeah you know or you can become a hollywood guy or maybe you can you do both of those things can you make i mean can you take all these 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 uh you've you've used the word uh, extensions Right, you have di- you have these characters and these ideas and that stupid fucking interview series we did um, with um, me, you, and Bill. We with it was Bill. someplace in Chelsea. They wanted the, the toy makers, and you talked about how you did this, this, and that, and that making toys was like an extension, uh, you know, of of your thing. What well, is you know? So you have a zillion extensions. Yeah. It's like, um, how do you finally decide like which are the Im- the important ones? Can you really do them all, or do you have to? F- you know have to pick and choose or yeah i think you do have to kind of pick and choose you know i mean i'm trying to get a lot of the studio stuff together um so that i feel like if I, I if i have some better systems in place then i can produce work a lot more efficiently you know um and then i could spend some time pursuing a cartoon or something i mean i have the story i have the one page to show to people i have like tons of pages written up about all the stories and the characters There's stories I, I all that stuff yeah 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 Really? It's all there, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but you know, in the paintings, I'm not going to really explore those narratives too much. You know, again, it's it's kind of about context, again, right? So it's like, you know, I mean, some of the paintings I do have a narrative. Like, you know, Hercules the Crossroads in, in uh, Coney Island and stuff. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure we can look that up. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you were there for the thing. It's like, if you're going to, like, make a fucking... Say you did have a hit cartoon on, on Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network or Adult Swim... And that was blowing the fuck up. I'm imagining your paintings for the next couple of years would be all that, right? Well, maybe it'd be the opposite because maybe I need a break from all that. Maybe it'd have to. But be I mean, don't you think? I mean, imagine if like you had a hit cartoon and you can bu- and you can buy a fucking zillion dollar painting by the guy that created the cartoon right. of the characters. Come on, of course you'd be doing that. Or Sounds you, good. So you I don't mean, seem like the type because that seems like a huge opportunity. You don't seem like the type of guy to suddenly turn around and be like, "Oh no, I need to do something totally different." Like at the height of your, you know, well, your and success actually, to that one point is thing. actually one of the reasons I haven't pursued cartoons more because I need to be able to like from a business side kind of work it out like a way that kind of makes sense for the long run. Yeah. And you know, if it's just some some big studio that's going to like own everything in perpetuity, that's kind of weird. And or if it's going to be like, "Hey, I'm going to create a cartoon that has nothing to do with what I do just so I can sell the rights and and be okay with it." Well, then that's weird too because now I'm taking this U-turn. I'm going down a different road where it's like, "No, no, no. It should all kind of build towards the same thing." So what's the same thing? Well, what what I'm doing, it should all be consistent and it all should be moving forward. And it, it involves be... the self-actualization of an individual human being, right? Like, well, yeah, you are I mean... going to be a peak person when this all happens, right? <laughs> you're going to be the best person you can possibly be. And then you're going to help everyone else, right? That sounds awesome. You're yeah. going to share all the great shit you I'm, have, I'm, right? I'm happy to share whatever. Like, it's not a problem. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I did a talk for these um, these uh, these uh, students recently. We met at my wall right over here on Christie, and uh, I had a really good talk with them about what it is to make street art, what it is to be a professional artist. I gave them like eight books to read. I made sure they made notes so they would read them. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're the type of guy that gives out books and then tells people. Man, to there's read the so notes. many books. You want Why me to give you a list of books? Why don't you teach a fucking class? Yeah. You want me to give yeah, you a yeah, list of books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, to read? fine. Oh, you know, amazing books. Okay, yeah. Why don't you help the viewers <laughs> out? Because we all want to know. Okay. Yeah. What's the list? Actually, uh, okay. What are the best books to read if you want to be like you? What's the best? <laughs> no, because I do. It's like part of me wants to destroy you right now, and the other part of me wants to like hear your okay, wisdom. Okay. This first, one book and that's then I'm amazing is called Give and Take, and it's actually about how our own success is based on how we help others, and it's amazing. It talks about Abe Lincoln, Michael Jordan, like it's like full on awesome. Uh, another book. How do you help others? Uh, that's an interesting question. No, I think it's <laughs> fairly straightforward. How do you help others? I've never thought about that. I mean, never. I, You've never thought about it. 
Well, I'd always want to help people more. I mean, it's, but I never have some guy in a microphone and a video camera being like, how do you help Yeah, but others? now you do. So <laughs> how do you act in this situation? It's like, it will be a real tell, test of your yeah. character. Well, or you know, if, it's, if you don't, that's okay. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty minimal with what I do for other people, too. So you don't have to feel guilty about it. Well, no, I, I want to help other people. I mean, But I, how do you actually do it on a day-to-day basis? How on a do you day-to-day help basis? Yeah, on a day-to-day basis. How many people do you help? What do you do? I don't know if it's on a day-to-day basis. Who's the last person you helped? I, I don't You know. really don't know? I mean, I, how are you going to judge that? I mean, I, Did you hold a door open for somebody? Yeah, of course. Did you show so. kindness to a stranger? Yeah, no problem. When a friend needed an hour of your time to, like... No problem. Okay, fine. Yeah, no problem. That's fair enough. Yeah, that sounds... Okay, cool. I offered to help my friend move today. It's not a problem. Like, okay, so then there you go. It's yeah, not a hard okay. question. All right. You know, it's the little things. Okay, so give and take is a good one. Uh, the $12 million stuffed shark, that's about the art world, and that's really okay, what's interesting. what's that about, the $12 million shark? So it's obviously a reference to Damien Hirst, right, with a stuffed shark, okay. uh, which is titled uh, The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living. And the book is really about the economics. And so it's like, why is this shark Worth twelve million dollars, as opposed to a really better shark. That's well, no, because you know, dollars. Damien Hurst bought that shark for like twenty grand. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now Damien puts it in a tank, and now it's art, and now it's twelve million dollars. So what? What is the mechanism there? What, how does it go from this price to this price? Because this guy touched it. Yeah, so it really goes into a lot of. It's like really interesting. And then um, beyond that one, the most insane uh, book I've read about the economy of art. Or the art um, business, should I say, is uh, talking prices, and um, yeah, that one is pretty interesting. Okay, give us some details. So, talking prices. It focuses on the primary market of artwork. So that means art in the galleries, right? Not right. not the secondary market, right, which like sold is, from the artist through a gallery. Right. So not secondary market, which is auction. So auction right. prices for big stuff gets reported, blah, blah, blah. You can right, find right, that right. information. And actually, the auction market is the exact opposite of the primary art market. Tell, right? Do tell. Well, so things that... Um, so, for example, galleries in the, in the traditional sense want to build an artist's career for the long term. Right. right? They want to the steadily the and very turnaround. slowly increase prices, place them in good collections. They want to like really build this thing out. And the auction is the exact opposite. They want to so flip it. How much can we get for that thing today? Like, we don't care who buys it. We don't care what his track record is. We don't care what effect this has on everything else he does. How much can we make today? Got it. And so, and the primary prices of artwork is is hard to track. You know, so he set out on this mission to, like, get this information to create this and, you know, do this analysis and, like, create this thing. And so he had to, like, you know, do what he could to get this information. And so what's the takeaway? You know, for me, it's just really being aware of, you know, um, just really how things work in the art world. So one of the examples in the book is, let's say you're making art and selling in a gallery. And let's say that your prices are, like, let's say a piece of work that you make sells for $15,000. Let's just say as an example. Sure. But what if that same piece of work at auction at, at the same time sells for $90,000? Now, that's a real-world example. Now, now, what are you supposed to do in that situation? Wait, how could that happen? Oh, it could happen easily. The same piece of work? Well, not, but it's, like, similar. Okay. Right? Something, right, like a comparable piece, right? So, okay. So that's the thing, right? Since the, the, the primary market and the secondary market are totally, mostly unrelated, you can have a, a whole bunch of different prices, right? So, like, what is the artist supposed to do in that situation? What's the gallery supposed to do in that situation? What's the answer? Well, according to the book, the answer is the gallery keeps the price exactly the same. But what they do is they get really picky about who they sell the artwork to. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, let's see. What else have I read recently? Wow, oh, that's... oh, The Power of Habit. That's an amazing book. I definitely recommend that one. Tell us about that one. The Power of Habit. That's about how our, our brain is really set up to save energy. And so, we create these habits. Right. And a lot of these are automatic. And, and of course. changing them takes energy. Um, not necessarily, actually. Oh, really? You know, but this it really talks about habits in terms of like you know what we think about of habits, but it also like relates to like Alcoholics Anonymous, all sorts of things. It talks about the brain and how different parts of your brain control different things. Where, in the book, they're talking to this old guy and he's 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 at home, 
in his living room and they ask him where is your kitchen and he says i have no idea but while they're talking to him he gets up goes to the kitchen gets a snack comes sits down and they ask him where's your kitchen he's like i don't know and so it's really interesting how the brain works and how how he would walk around the neighborhood if you asked him which house was his he's like, i don't know but as long as all the neighborhood looked the same he could get himself home so if there was construction he'd get lost he wouldn't make it home that day it's like really interesting seeing how the brain works um and i think it was in that book that they talked about like in, in business where they talked about this guy who took over this huge steel company and most people in that situation would talk about how they're gonna you know lower costs increase profits for the shareholders blah 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 and he said you know what number one priority is safety and everyone thought he was insane and he said no no safety that's it all we're gonna focus on is safety everyone thought he was crazy but you know what within two years they were making more money than ever how, how did that work exactly well, you should read the book. I don't really want to give it All away. All right. Well, I mean, you're teasing, you're teasing us with this. Shit. Um, wow. I didn't. I mean, I you know, I didn't real. I didn't really realize what a like a uh, fucking weird mentat you were. A mentat? Yeah. It's like a. It's one of those human computers in Dune. <laughs> you know, it's like you really um, seem to be good at assimilating information, and applying it, in an almost. Non well, I like kind learning things. Uh, you know, it's like I'm, we're we're not in school anymore. We just you know we have our life and we do what we do and blah blah blah. But I really like learning stuff. I mean, it's awesome, you know. And so, yeah. So I don't know. There's other books I can talk. Well, about. Well, how does that okay. relate to the power the power of the color pink? I mean, you're a big pink guy. Does this all relate? Yeah, but somehow? you know, moving forward, like so, like this zine that I'm going to publish is going to be black and white. Okay. And it's really, you know, for me, it's like conceptually, yeah, it should be black and white. It really is about laying all the stuff out on the line and really just kind of dealing with it. And actually moving forward in my studio practice, you know, pink actually isn't really a big thing for me. You like pink. I do, but, you know, but it's some, not like the main thing. It's not the main thing, but, you know, for me, it's kind of like but this. But it's, it's, I've been identified. Yeah. With you. We've had to fight over who owns pink. Oh, on I don't know. Oh, did we fight? Somebody on some blog somewhere. Oh, really? tried to provoke something but really? you know you have buff monster pink is there a specific pantone color that is the buff well not a pantone pink? color because oh. i don't have a, i haven't worked with right right the pantone people but, but but there is a color no but i mean you have a specific color that you can i mean if i have to call out a color if i'm specking something yeah yeah i can call out what is it 806 is for us in pink but that's not really buff monster pink that's like right but that's your go-to pink well there's no other good pink i right. mean i need something that's vibrant and saturated and you know, yeah, I mean that that's as close as it's gonna but get. But not too magenta. But yeah, like two thirty two or you know, something like or two twelve. I mean those are okay pinks too. <laughs> J Corp. <laughs> what do I do with this fucking guy? I mean I thought you'd want to talk about business, because that's what you and I usually talk no, about. No, we usually talk about business, but I mean, I guess, you know, maybe we should, we, we should switch the gears to the, to, to the personal. Okay. Are you happy? Oh, in life? Yeah. And just me? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Not, hell yeah. <laughs> just, yeah? Yeah, I mean, you know. You seem to have a lot of your material needs taken care of. I do. Are I you happy do. in your relationship? I am. Let's talk about your relationship. N you know I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I mean, you have a partner in all of this. I shit. do. And She's you, your awesome. Your girlfriend is relent as a relentless <laughs> campaigner for your cause. She is amazing. She is the most uh, supportive uh, partner right. I've ever yeah, had. Yeah, and you guys She's... are totally insufferable when you're together. She's amazing. But that's fine. <laughs> we have a lot of fun, you know. I know. And and you know we 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 our priorities are aligned, and you know. Are you gonna marry her? You know, um... You probably should. We... Marriage is not really something we really want to explore. Like, you know, she doesn't want to get married. I don't really want to get married. My parents weren't married. Do you want to have kids? You know, no, I don't, I'm not really interested in kids, and she isn't either. So it's like, you know, we just... You know, we have this life. We get to travel. We get to do all sorts of things. So what are you doing when you're an old man? What am I doing? Yeah. Uh... That's a good when question. all the wars are won, where are you? Um, I don't know. You know, I mean, I don't know. I haven't thought about when I'm an old man. I mean, aren't you just going to be working until 
You don't work No, anymore? I'm going to retire at some yeah? point. Yeah, I expect to retire. Yeah? Well, I expect to... I want to live on some island somewhere and just play with Playmobil all day and have, like, all my, like, ex-girlfriends living with me. That sounds awesome. You know, but I don't want to have to be, like, hustling to try to do anything. If yeah. I feel like working on something, sure. But I would like to get to a point where I just don't have to do shit and I don't feel like I have to play this fucking game anymore. And I don't have to be constantly chasing after and striving the next achievement and accomplishment and connection and project and thing. But you I mean, know? but you don't it's have like I to. Want, no, I no, mean, but that's know. how I feel now. Yeah. Don't you feel that way? Aren't you like just totally fucking chasing the next thing all the time? No, not at all. What do you mean, not at all? I've, I mean, for the last 10 years, I've said no to most things that come by my way. No, but I mean, you as know, far as like... what's on your agenda of the things you want to accomplish in life. You're well, constantly only because, pursuing Only because things. I want to do that. Yeah, but don't you feel at some point you're not going to want to do that? You think till the day you die, there's always going to be one more thing that you're going to try to do? Or will you one day just say, like, you know what, my work is It would be nice done. to get to the point where it's like... I've Even done, though it I've will never all here. be done. Like, you will get to that point and be like, well, I didn't get to do this, this, and this, or whatever, but I did this, well, this, and this, an and I'm happy. Thought, right? Because if you don't have kids, if you don't have someone that can kind of, like, fill that role to, you know, further what you've been doing, that, that's an interesting thing. And I don't really know how to deal with that. Well, I don't either. That's why I have this weird fantasy that all the people I've ever loved will, like, come to me when I'm, like, old and on some fucking fantasy island somewhere. Because I'm not going to have any kids. You know, I'm not going to have a family is the way things are going and it's like it's some so that you know so I'm completely invest I'm going all in on my work it's like I'm, I'm forgoing having a family and doing yeah. that normal thing and my chief concern is going to be just doing my shit to the best of my ability well, till, like, much till I I'm can't at. do it anymore yeah, I mean, but then what happens when you get to the end of that and you're a, you're an old man you're a, you're not and you're you you don't want to fucking have to do yeah. that shit anymore you might I mean do you think I ask myself the same question about the suck lord. You'll get to a day where you don't want to be buff monster anymore. And I don't think you just, it's a matter of being buff monster or not. I or think to it's have a matter to of uplift that. You know, have to keep that going. No, I, to be you know, personally I, responsible for maintaining the existence of that. Well, going back to what we're talking about in terms of giving back, you know, I, I think it's our duty and responsibility to do well. Right? Sure. Mm -hmm. It's our duty to do well and to do so well that we can get things set up and we can spend our time doing other things. Yeah, but I mean, right? I'm just talking about hanging it all up at one point. No, but see, ideally, it wouldn't be hung up. Ideally, it would be I'd, I'd have some situation where there are people that could further what I do. Yeah, but do you think you'll get to a point where you don't even give a fuck? When you're like a hundred years old. Well, what else would old? I be doing? I mean, you I know, like, that's what know. I do. Like, I the, mean, why are you called Buff Monster? What is <laughs> Buff Monster? Buff Monster is a construction to some degree, isn't totally. it? Totally. Same with the Suck Lord. Yeah. And it's a responsibility of yours to maintain it and, f f up, you know, fortify it and build I, I, it and advance I don't, it. Right? I, I don't feel that way at all. No? I mean, no, maybe, Buff maybe 10 years, years ago thing. I felt that way. No, but but for me, I just, I just kind of like... Quietly just trudge along and do the stuff I no, do. No, but the, and, you the know, stuff just... you're doing is Buff Monster. Everything you do in life is as Buff Monster, isn't it? Yeah. What I, do you think you'll ever get to a point where you don't want to do Buff Monster anymore? I mean, I know I'm not. I know it's like people ask me this kind of shit all the time about my persona or my creative person, my invented person. You know, I've created a sort of construction. Of you know, for myself as a platform to do the things that I do in the world publicly and sell to people and offer to people, and some people say, well, there's another person underneath all of that, and other people like myself will say, no, that's actually the thing, and right. there is no inner person. Right. But the the reality is fucking exclusive. There is kind of an inner person that isn't the suck lord. It isn't even Morgan. You know, it's just like there's an inner person underneath all of this shit who at some point might get tired of trying to have to just t constantly make shit. Do you already and feel tired shit. of holding up that? No. Because it seemed like a lot of work. I mean. No, but I mean, you don't you don't feel that about what you've made. Not as a personality, you don't not think as something I gotta keep. Buff Monster isn't an ego expression. No, of course it is. Yeah. It's an expression of individuality, isn't it? Yeah, I have, I have an idea, and I want to create things that are consistent. But it's also a that. self that you've created, haven't you? Yeah. And is there something behind <laughs> that self, or not? <laughs> is there? Uh. I guess. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, you were talking about the Melty Misfits and how that was such a 
a line in the sand or, you know, whatever, a turning point or whatever. I mean, you know, I love Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah, I know. And, you know, and separate from making art, I just love collecting Garbage Pail Kids. You know, it's awesome. That's your inner life is Garbage Pail no, Kids? No, I don't know if that's my inner life, but that's something I really enjoy. Do you believe in God? No. No? No. Do you think when you die it just goes to black? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's what drives me trying to do all the stuff that I do, right? So is it important for you to leave something in the world for you to be I remembered think, by? I, yeah, definitely. Do you want people to still be talking about what you did? Not for my own sake, but if I've created something... For the world's sake. No, but if I've created something that's resonated with a certain number of people, then that would be great, you know? But you'll never know if you did. No. But, but I'd have an idea if I was on the right track. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Fascinating questions. So what? What? What do you want to talk about? No, it's uh, this go you're, the way in you char- you're in charge. You're in charge. No, I know this didn't go at all the way. I expected, <laughs> to be honest with you. Me neither. I think. I we, mean, we, I didn't have ma- many expectations, but I actually kind of like and respect you more now than I yeah. did before. Well, that's all. I appreciate that. You too. I will totally. I mean, I never got a chance to really talk to you. You, know, you were a little mad at him when you after you worked at him. Because you it was a bad fit, and like, and like, you know, I felt I felt like I was in it. It was it challenged me to look at a lot of my weaknesses. So that's why I was mad, but I was more mad at myself as opposed to at this person who showed me the things that I could be doing better at. He could be a little bit of a dick, though. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I remember you played a you played a podcast or something that had like a like somebody making uh, speaking in like a Chinese accent in English or something. Oh. And um, yeah, Joe Coy on the Adam Carolla yeah, podcast, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I love. By the way, yeah, and and, and oh, and, and I and I didn't quite understand the humor in that, so I was oh, like really? uncomfortable for like. Well, you know what's really funny so. about that? They tried uh, NPR tried to skewer Adam about having Joe Coy on there doing this like really like insulting like Asian. Right, voice. right, right, right. Um, but you know, but the reality and what he told the guy in NPR was like, well, that he's he's Asian. I mean, that's him doing an Asian voice. Like, what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, right. I, I don't know. Oh, so it was an Asian fellow doing the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, then it's fine. Right? Yeah, or I mean, it's, it's, it's or fine. is it? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, one clip that I like, um, I, I probably didn't play it for you, J Corp, was that uh, Coffee's for Closers. Coffee's for Closers. Yeah. You know Coffee's for Closers? No, what's that? I think it's the best seven minutes in movie history. It's amazing. Coffee's for Closers. It's uh, Alec Baldwin, um, like 20 years ago in this movie and I actually watched the rest of the movie thinking it would be like the seven minutes not even close so it's um yeah it's about Alec Baldwin he comes in to motivate these like car salesmen or Uh whatever you know to like perform better okay and it's just it's just he's so rude and so insulting but so like to the point it's you that's how you see yourself that's how you are you I can't believe you've never seen this Glenn Gary, you would, Glenn Ross? Is exactly. That it? But if you just go on YouTube, look up Coffees for Closers, you'll get the seven minutes. Yeah. You would love this, Mr. Sucklord. Have you ever thought about giving seminars or any of that shit? I like talking. You do? I do. You're actually good. I feel inspired. I wanted to hate you desperately. <laughs> Since I've met you, I've wanted to hate you, and I just can't. And I guess I'm okay with that. But, I'm just um, a nice guy. You are a nice you know, guy. I mean, and it's just know, like, the thing is, it's like... To be honest with you, there just it just seems like there's just an unfortunate tendency for people to just like get mad at people that do well. Like you effectively eliminated a lot of the typical bullshit that a lot of other people have to a lot of other creative people have to do. And other and people are mad at you for that, you know, because, you know, they still have to fuck with that shit. So you should do like fucking seminars. Uh, well, that'd be awesome. Uh, I mean, I I uh, posted after I did this talk with these students a couple weeks ago. I posted on Instagram like I love doing talks. If someone kind of wants me to do a talk, I know, I man. Can. You I could mean, probably make a lot of money just giving fucking presentations and lectures and shit like that. I'm working on that type of shit. Yeah, too. yeah. I've done stuff like that. I've gone and spoke at high schools. Yeah, yeah. All girls high schools. There you go. Well, that's different. Um, no, but I mean, I, I have inspir- inspirational words. The last talk I did was for 400 people, and that was awesome. Aren't you special? No, it's Isn't good. that a big number? No, it's good. Isn't that a cool guy number? <laughs> Aren't you happy to be yourself? But I'm not, like, banging down the door saying, hey, invite me to give a talk, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, if you want me to talk, I'll do a talk. But All right, yeah, I invited you here to talk, and now you're talking, yeah, so. it's good. 
put that in your fucking pipe and smoke <laughs> it. Alright, buff. I really had a good time chilling with you. Likewise. We're going to have to wrap this episode up All pretty right. soon. No so, problem. you know, thank God. Because, <laughs> I mean, this could go... I Because mean, you're feeling too good about yourself. No, it's not that. It's just like... I can only take so much of this. Um, <laughs> and we have to clear the decks. We have another guest coming That's right. Up. So what what do you want? You want to just say any any last words? What do you got? What's next? How do I how do I do? What do I do? What do I need? What what's up? What um you? yeah, well actually I have a couple nice uh, client projects coming out real soon. That Nobody cares. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's actually good. Uh, the one that I actually haven't even announced yet, maybe by Friday I will have announced it, is um, this this project I've been working on for minions actually. I don't know what the oh the yeah, minions. Despicable this, oh, minions. What, what are you doing? I've been working on this project. Um, How like, do you get those kind of gigs? You know, each each one of those is is different. Actually, you know, people so, just cold call you out of sometimes nowhere. Sometimes it's a random email, like, "Hey, uh, can you do this thing?" Sometimes it's like, "Hey, you know, um, it's people you fucked with before." Yeah, or, you know, someone that I work with, Dana, somebody has a friend that hey, is like, "Hey, why don't we? Uh, how about we do something?" So you know, and Minions is like, you know. It's great, you know, Is and it? it's 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 kind of related to kind of what I do. It's, yeah, your you know, shit looks like you totally ripped it off from me. Or the other way around. Oh yeah, okay. Sure. <laughs> you know, or SpongeBob or whatever. Oh SpongeBob, I love SpongeBob. Yeah, I, mean, I know. You know clear, clearly, you do. Come on. <laughs> right. Hey, I love I love Star Wars. Yeah, well, yeah, we know that about you. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. it's and oh oh, and one book actually about Star Wars. Um, How Star Wars Conquered the Universe. Yeah. Do you know that book? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. The, the subtitle is The uh, Past, Present, Future of a Multi-Billion Dollar Franchise. Amazing book. Amazing. How does it apply to your work? Well, I'm always interested to see how people who create intellectual property, like an entity, yes. how they shepherd it through the world and through a series of business and keep it going and make money off of it yeah i mean it's just interesting you know i watched that uh, that documentary about ninja turtles turtle power that mm. was interesting you know have you seen that one no i haven't oh, but it's the same type of thing yeah you know it's just interesting because you know i'm a guy who's making things and i'm not you know i want to see what the other people who did things no, kind of no, like appreciate this have done. that you know it seemed like on one you know, i think a lot of other creative types don't think to look at this type of shit and you know on a one surfacey level it seems like a sort of calculated asshole like business school type of way to approach art but fuck you know it's applicable as hell and it's important you know and this is this is fucking business so it's like nothing wrong with it what's that andy warhol line like big art is big biz big business yeah and the best art is the best business do you agree with that definitely like art is better if it sells well, that's not that's not the point. I mean, you know what what you do you know, think it, your art is really good, or you're just really good at the business of art, or a little bit of both? Uh, well, again, this is me being humble, not wanting to say my stuff is awesome. I mean, I I do what I do, and mm. there you go. You right. know, but but you know, I like thinking about this idea of business being all around us. You know that that you know this microphone is from a business, this couch is from a business, yeah. this shirt's from like everything is a result of business. Everything, every single thing, every meal we eat every drink we drink it's all a result are you, of business. are you a republican no okay <laughs> i don't identify like either way on the political spectrum right I just you know i think we can be self-reliant and just do what we do and, okay i know okay good yes as do i okay okay um good. that's fucking great thanks awesome thanks buff. social media buff monster on facebook at buff monster twitter instagram well at buff that. monster on everything you're really good yep. at that yep. shit that's really right. That shit. It's got to be consistent, man. Thanks, Buff. You were really, 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 really good. Thank you, buddy. J Corp, thank you. Picture of Nasty Nail. Cool. Hey, uh, I learned something today, and I hope you did too, and I hope you recognize this as an opportunity to continue to support this endeavor on all the social medias, and particularly on Patreon page. Motherfucker, if you want to <laughs> keep seeing this quality content, Buff Monster. And this is just the beginning. <laughs> uh, Thank you, everybody. Good night.